So for this one, we'll just share with you some of the findings from our cross-cultural study. So the, again, this is a cross-national study of family functioning in families of children with Down syndrome. So the birth of the baby with Down syndrome is a life-changing event for most families, um, even if they find out prenatally or after the baby's born. But existing findings would suggest that while some families of children with Down syndrome do have difficulty adapting, others adapt quite well, and some even thrive. But one of the limitations of the existing research that we have is much of it has been the participants tend to be English-speaking parents from North America or Western Europe. Also, the, tip, the studies typically um, focus on participants from a single country. And also, many of the studies only include mothers. So what we wanted to do for this study is to examine how family factors influence adaptation <laughs> in families of individuals with Down syndrome. It's a cross-sectional study, descriptive, it's mixed methods. All the participants complete a packet of questionnaires that are designed to uh, assess key dimensions of the resiliency model. They can either do a hard copy version or they can do the online version. But as I said, the majority will do an online version. We also interviewed a subset of 120 parents, but I won't be sharing that with you today. This is the resiliency model, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with the resiliency model, but it's a model that was developed by McCubbin and, Mc, the, McCubbin and his colleagues. And the idea of this model is that there's a critical event that happens in a person's life. It could be the birth of a baby with Down syndrome. It could be the diagnosis of a family member, say, with breast cancer. But what happens is when you assess that family, sometimes we forget that that's not the only thing going on in their life. So the idea is we'll look at family factors that might influence how that family is doing, how they adapt. And the first one you can look at is family demands. And as I said, sometimes we forget that this isn't the only thing that's going on in their life. So family demands are what else is going on in their life. It has to do with do they have other stresses and strains? Do they have another family member who's ill? Are they, do they have a toddler who's going through the terrible twos? Do they have a teenager that's causing issues? Do they have problems at work? Do they have problems, other problems? We also look at family appraisal, and that's how the family views their situation. What is it like to have, say, a child with Down syndrome? Do they view it as a tragedy, or do they do, view it as a blessing? Um, family resources, what kinds of resources? And this is not just the ones we think about social support, but within the family, what are the resources of individuals? What are the resources? So are they good on the computer? Do they have a good sense of humor? Do they problem solve well? But also at the family level and at the community level. And then problem solving communication is how do they work together to solve problems? How do they communicate? And what you do, and you can use this clinically too, is when you assess a family using this framework, then what you do is you focus interventions on what's the most important for that family. So they might view the situation as, it's just a challenge, the family will be fine. But on the other hand, they might have so many demands that this is where you need to focus. Or maybe they have no resources, so this is where you would focus. But the idea is you tailor the care to meet the family's needs. So this just shows you these are the measures I used, and these are the measures that actually assess the key dimensions of the model. And the first one is a measure that was developed by the people who developed the model. And then the family management measure looks how family manage living with a, a chronic illness. And it's how families actually um, are able to, like do the, is the illness the main focus in their family or do they help the illness live alongside? So they live alongside the illness. So the illness is not the most important. And then we assess family problem solving communication, family member well-being, and family functioning and some demographics. Initially, I was very worried that this was too many items. And if you're a doctoral student, your advisor might say, no, this is too many. But when we put them on the survey, we had to pilot test, and it took parents between 20 to 40 minutes. And when I said, is it hard, is it difficult to do? They were like, no, this is good. So the good thing with SurveyMonkey is you can actually see how long it takes people to complete. 
I will tell you, because it's long, you would hope that the good, the items that you really want to get information on are at the first part of the survey, because if you're going to lose people, it's at the end of the survey. So there are some measures that we do not have all the data from all the people because they start the questionnaire and they don't finish it. But we made it so that you, when you do the questionnaire, if a parent's doing it, we know that some parents don't have 20 minutes, don't have 40 minutes in one sitting. So we practiced to make sure that a parent could start, they could stop, and then when they came back in, they would be at the same place where they stopped. So this is all the different countries where we've collected data from parents. And I don't have enough places on there to put all the stars because many of them overlap. But we've been very, very fortunate. Like I said, there's over 3,000 parents from more than 50 countries. And this one, I have to show you on a different slide, sorry. Let's see, maybe I, okay, can you show me? For some reason, this part didn't show up, but we have it on a different slide. So this just shows you where the main 12 countries were and how many mothers and how many fathers from each of the countries. So we started doing it in the US and then we went to Ireland and the UK, but then we kept doing it in other countries. Probably the last country that we did it from was Israel and Italy. Um, in Israel, it was hard for them. It took them a long time to get the data collected. So this is data just on 1,665 because they had all the data we needed. There was no missing things. So for those of you who are doctoral students who've taken classes in stats recently, we use linear mixed modeling. So we put in 10 predictors and we had the one outcome, which is family functioning for this talk. Then we also looked at gender of the pa person, the parent status, were they partnered, non-partnered, um, the country they were from. And also because we would have parents from the same family, if you remember with statistics, you have to make sure you account for that. And so we did, the statistician accounted for intrafamilial correlation and he did looked at constant variance in the families where there was to two parents. So when we did, so if we look at family functioning, this is the general scores for family functioning. And unfortunately, I think for family functioning, the higher scores actually mean you're doing worse. So sometimes we think that higher scores should mean you're better, but on this measure, they mean you're doing worse. So we have to clarify this. So if you have a score of 35, less than 35, you're doing excellent, 36 to 44 is increasing strength, and this would be average score. So if you look, the families, the mothers and fathers in this study, I think the battery's running out. It'll stay. Is that okay? The battery's running out, it says. Is that okay? Okay. I just ignore it. I don't think it's going to let me ignore. No, it's okay. So, and this goes for the different countries. And if you look at Spain, for Spain, mothers was 47.2. For fathers, it was 47.4. So again, they fell within the average. And this is important information because many times when a new baby is born with Down syndrome, there are healthcare providers who tell the families, um, having a baby with Down syndrome will ruin your family. It's the worst thing that could happen. Um, we are hearing from families prenatally when they're told that they are going to have a baby with Down syndrome, they're often told this will destroy your family. And so this data would show that that's not the case. Um, each of the 10 predictors had a significant effect on family function in the expected direction. So we used that adaptive modeling then to make it more specific and to look at the mo ones that had the greatest impact. Family functioning was better if you had greater condition management ability. So the family felt they were able to manage that condition. It was better if the family, family mutuality was better or higher. Family mutuality means they work together, that families are consistent in their approach. If there was family hardiness was greater, they tended to have better family functioning. And if they used more affirming communication, and affirming communication is the kind that can calm you down, that's more, that's more um, you communicate in a respectful way. There's a different kind called incendiary communication where you yell and scream. 
So family functioning is worse when there's greater family stress, which makes sense. It's worse if they say there's greater family life difficulty. And it's worse if there's more incendiary communication in the family. Parents from six countries were significantly different from parents in the US in terms of family functioning. Family functioning was significantly worse than the US in Brazil, Israel, Portugal, Spain, and Thailand. Family functioning was significantly better than the US in Brazil, I mean Korea. Um, also, so that would suggest that we need to look and see what's going on within that country why in one country their family functioning is better than in a different country. And that's what we're hoping to do in the next study. Another thing is as the child got older, family functioning got worse. And this makes sense in some ways because for children with Down syndrome, as they age, the difference between the child with Down syndrome and the typically developing child tends to broaden. So whereas as babies, they're very similar. As they get older, maybe there's greater differences. you see that? Do you want it bigger? You see it? Okay. So findings from our study contribute to our understanding of the underlying processes that associate different outcomes in families of individuals with Down syndrome. Efforts to intervene with families will be more effective if healthcare providers recognize how culture and family factors interact to shape how families will respond. And I want to thank you. I do our next study, what our hope is that we will study again, study families from a number of countries, but now we're going to focus on social determinants of health to look at what is the difference between the resources that are available to families of children with Down syndrome, also to look at the approaches to prenatal screening, because in many countries, especially here in Europe, the approach to prenatal screening for families who have a child with Down syndrome, many were told, again, um, you should have the testing done and you should terminate. Um, here in the Europe, the termination rate for babies with Down syndrome is about 98 to 99 percent. And there are countries here in Europe that um, their goal is that no babies will be born with Down syndrome. Now in the U.S., I would say it's, it's not quite the same. As you know, our health system has, is different than yours. There are strengths to it. There are many flaws to it. But I think one of the things is there isn't a consistent approach to prenatal screening like there is in some countries that have a national health care system. And because of that, I think what happens is families have a greater chance to make a decision on their own. And so in our country, about 60% would terminate compared to 98 or 99 here in Europe. So again, I thank you for your attention and I apologize that it's not in Spanish. Okay.